Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at hedges of unrecognized foreign currency firm commitment using a forward contract. Following IFRS 9, specifically, we're going to be looking at a fair value hedge in this example. This topic is typically covered in international accounting, the CPA exam, as well as the ACCA exam. As always, connect with me with LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, and tax lectures. Please like my lectures. Click on the like, like button. That helps me a lot. And if you like my lectures, share them. Put them in the playlist. If they're benefiting you, it means that they might benefit other people. Share the wealth. Please follow me on Instagram. I'm trying to grow my Instagram followers. This is my Facebook, and this is my website. Also, if you're studying for a CPA exam, CFA exam, or for any other exam, I strongly su suggest you check out studypal.co. It's an artificial intelligence driven study buddy platform that match you with a study buddy. They have users in 85 countries and 2,800 cities from Chicago to LA. This is their website. Check them out. So what is unrecognized foreign currency firm commitments? So a lot of words. Let's go ahead and break it down. First of all, if you're familiar with purchase commitment under US GAAP, basically it's the same thing. It's a purchase commitment. So what is a purchase commitment? So if you understand what a purchase commitment is, you'll be able to understand what a firm commitment is. A purchase commitment is when the firm, when the company commitment to, has a commitment to acquire, to buy goods or services from a supplier or sells goods or services for a specific fixed price. So basically what you did, you signed the contract and you cannot get out of this contract. You are boxed in. Okay, either you are buying something at a fixed price or you are selling something at a fixed price. This is what a commitment is. Now, for our, for this, for this purpose, for the purpose of this lecture, we are dealing with foreign currency commitment. Now, you sold something, you're going to be receiving that money, that money in a foreign currency. You sold something or you bought something and you have to pay money in a foreign currency. So you have unrecognized foreign currency. Why is it unrecognized? What do you mean by it's unrecognized? It means you, there is no assets or liability on the books. All what you did is you sign the contract. That's all what you did. And now you have to protect that signature because that signature would require you to either pay in a foreign currency or receive a foreign currency, which you have to, which you have to translate. So you are hedging your commitment. You're hedging your signature because you cannot technically, th in theory, you cannot get out of this contract. Therefore, protect your exposure. But you don't have an asset and you don't have a liability. You don't have a receivable and you don't have a payable. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is because we have many type of hedging combination. Okay. So far, just let you know what we have so far. I have those in the description. I explained forward contract, cash flow hedge. I explained forward contract, fair value hedge. Then I have foreign currency option and I gave you the link. So this is, so you have to understand that when we hedge, we have many types of hedged we can hedge many things we can hedge an asset or a liability foreign currency in an asset or a liability or we can hedge a firm commitment which is that's what we're doing in this session hedging a third commitment also we could be using forward contract option swipe swaps future in this recording we're going to be using forward contract so and you have to understand and under the way we hedge the risk we could use fair value hedge or a cash cash flow hedge. So I want you to understand I have different scenarios, but I just want to, you know, if you're looking for forward contract, cash flow hedge, go to this recording, forward contract, fair value hedge, foreign currency option. If you are using foreign currency option and under foreign currency option, I, I do have both cash flow hedge as well as fair value hedge. And what I did, I focused on the cash flow hedge and I went over the fair value briefly. In this session, I'll go over fair value in, in detail and I will go over the cash flow, if any, very briefly. So just want to let you know you have many combinations. So that's the first thing I want to clarify. So the best way to illustrate this, as, as always, with all the other hedging examples, all with the other hedging concepts is to work an example. Assume now it's December 1st, year one, and Exim Co. received and accepted an order from a Spanish customer to deliver goods on March 1st at a price of 1 million euros. So we signed a contract and we said, we commit to deliver goods to that company and they're gonna pay us $1 million uh, March 1st. We signed the contract December 1st. We don't have to deliver anything till March. In March, this is when we receive the money. Assuming further under the terms of the agreement, we will ship the goods on March 1st and we will receive the payment immediately. Okay. So here, nothing happened December 1st, except that we agreed to 
deliver the goods. But at the same time, we know once we deliver the goods, we're going to have we're, money will be waiting for us in a foreign currency. What are we going to do with that money? Okay. Now, notice the sale will not, not take place till March, but we made a firm commitment. We signed. We put our name on the line. Now, we have to protect that. Assuming here we cannot get out of it. Okay, this th this scenario creates a euro asset exposure to foreign currency exchange risk as of December 1st. As of December 1st, the company now is exposed, exposed to the fluctuation in the euros. Okay, so on this date, we want to hedge. On December 1st, X Exim Co. wants to hedge against an adverse change in the value of the euro over the next three months. This is known as hedge of a foreign currency firm commitment. So notice, we did not make a sale. We did not buy anything. We just made a commitment. And that commitment created an exposure. And that exposure is basically called the firm commitment. And we need to protect that firm commitment. This is what we're doing here. So for the sake of illustration, we're going to be using the fair value hedge to illustrate this scenario. So under the fair value hedge, hopefully you would remember from the prior recording, if you did watch them, the gain or the loss of the hedging instrument is recognized in net income. And the gain or the loss and the change in the fair value of the firm commitment is also recognized in net income. So everything goes into net income. Okay. So this accounting treatment would require that you measure the fair value of the firm commitment. So you have a firm commitment and you're going to keep in track of that firm commitment. Track means up or down. Recognizing the change in the fair value and net income. As always, fair value goes into net income. That's another thing that hopefully now it's drilled into your head. And reporting firm commitment on the balance sheet as an asset or a liability. Depending on the firm commitment is an asset, whether it's an asset or whether it's a liability, depending on what happened to the currency. This raises the conceptual question of how we are tracking the fair value of the firm commitment. Because think about it. We have a firm commitment. Well, we have to look at the foreign currency. Which foreign currency are we looking at? Do we look at the spot rate or do we look at the forward rate? And guess what? Both of them, they're acceptable. So you could look at the spot rate to find the changes in your firm commitment. Or you could look at the forward rate to find the changes in your firm commitment. Now, if you don't know what the spot rate or the forward rate is, Go to this chapter, the first lecture. I explain what's the spot rate versus the versus the forward rate. So, so to hedge the position, Eximco decided to enter into a forward contract. So we're going to be using a forward contract. This is the hedging instrument because we can use a contract or we could use an option. In the next session, I'm going to tell you we're going to use an option. Okay, so now we're going to be using a forward contract. Now, if you don't know the difference between forward and option, you have to go to the prior session and you know learn the difference. On December first. The three month forward rate is 1.485. So we bought a forward contract. So once we receive the euros, we can sell them at 1.485. Okay, so we can get 1,485,000 US dollar from this, from this transaction. It doesn't matter what the rate of the euro is on that date. No cash change on December 1st. All what we did is we bought this, con we made a commitment to buy this contract and there's really no cost for this. Okay, and we elected to use the fair value method of the firm commitment through changes in the forward rate. So we're going to go with the fair value, not cash flow, and we're going to be using the forward rate as we go through this example. So we're going to be using the forward rate to measure the changes in the firm commitment and to measure the changes in our gains and losses. Now, what I suggest you do, copy this information down or take a picture of it because the journal entries will be based on this. And I suggest you also create T accounts for all the accounts we're going to be using to see how we open them, how we close them, what happened to them from year to year. I'm going to show you the journal entries and explain the journal entries. But the best way to the best way to uh, to really learn this is to see how what's happening to the journal entries, what's happening to each account. OK, what's happening to the gains? What's happening to the losses from year to year? What's happening to the asset? What's happening to the liability from year to year? So here we go. 1231 year one, the forward rate 1.458. This is where we enter into the commitment. The fair value of the hedge is nothing because it's the same as the spot rate. There's nothing on 12 1 2001 or year one. 1231, the forward rate 1.496. We made a mistake if we waited. To buy this contract on 1231, we could have get 1.496. So notice we, we, we purchase this forward rate a little bit prematurely. What happened to the, to this contract? Well, it, it worked against us. We have the fair value went down 10,783. Now, how did they here? They show you how you came up with that. So really 
you would have received 1,496 if you waited to enter into this contract December 1st. But we don't want to take that chance. We wanted to enter, we wanted to enter this contract as of December, December 1st. Therefore, we kind of lost $11,000. However, using the time value of money, if we discount the $11,000, our losses are 10783 based on the present value factor of 12%. It doesn't matter, okay? Now, the amount is the same as the fair value of the forward contract, but with the opposite sign. So every time, we, now, if, if, the, if, if the currency worked against us, the commitment would work for us. If the foreign currency, uh, the forward rate, work with us the firm commitment will work against us so the forward rate and the firm commitment they work in the opposite way just like all the other hedges if your asset goes down if your receivable goes down you have a loss on the receivable you're going to have gain on the hedge if the receivable goes up you're going to have a loss on the hedge so they work the opposite way so notice here we have a loss a loss on the hedged instrument oh no, i'm sorry oh yeah on the hedge instrument on on the contract okay by December 1st, year one, the spot rate was 1.48, which is good for us because we can get 1.485. It means we're going to get a $5,000 gain. And what happened to the value of the, uh, the value of the forward contract went from negative, went from negative 10,783 to positive 15,000, 15,783. Okay. So the value went from negative to positive. So we have a gain. Why? Because the spot rate was lower than our commitment. So we did good. We did good. Why? Because we locked our price at 1.485. So let's look at the journal entries and see what happened from year to year. What journal entries do we make? So let's take a look at the journal entries. First, on December 1st, there is no entry. No entry to record as either the sale agreement or the forward contract are, are both our executory contract. Nothing really changed hand at, at this point. Okay. So just we'll have a memorandum saying this is a forward contract. Remember, we have to document if we are doing hedge accounting, we have to explain why it's hedging, what type of hedging, so on and so forth. Then on December 31st, remember what happened on December 31st? We did not wait. We signed the contract a little bit prematurely. We have a loss of 10783 Remember, it's an $11,000 loss, but we have to discount it. So the loss is 10783 Now remember, the loss on the contract is offset by a firm commitment because a loss on the contract, it means we did good on the firm commitment, okay? So it's offset by a gain. So a loss is offset by a gain. Therefore, we're going to have a liability and an asset. Nothing really overall. If you really look at things, we have a gain, we have a loss, net income is zero. We we have an asset called firm commitment, and we have a forward contract, which is a liability. So basically, nothing really happened. Everything canceled each other out, but it's very important that you keep track of your assets and your liabilities. The gains and the losses, they're going to be closed out. But the assets and the liabilities will be with you from year to year. So keep that in mind. So the nature of the asset, nature of the liability. So net income is zero. You have a liability and you have an asset. Okay. Now, now it's we're going to be looking at the transaction that takes that takes place on March 1st. What happened on March 1st? Remember, March 1st, you 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 deliver the product and they're going to pay you a million euros on that day. OK, and remember, this is the data. I should have keep bringing this data every time I'm working these examples, but that's fine. Remember this. So remember, on March 1st, the forward contract works for you. Why? Because the spot rate is dollar forty eight. And you can sell your euro for 1.485. So immediately you have a gain. And the change in the fair value of the contract is 15,783. So you went from a loss of 10,783 year one to a gain of 15,783. Okay, let's take a look at what happened. So you debit the forward contract, 15,783, and you book a gain of 15,783. Then to, this is to adjust the fair value of the contract from the 10,783 to 5,000 because now you are at a gain of 5,000 to go from uh, to go from uh, 10,000 loss, 10,783 loss to 5,000 gain. You have to move 15,783 to the right, basically. So simply put on a timeline, if this is zero, you are standing right here, negative 10,783, and you have to move to positive. 5,000. So you have to move 15,783. If you're going to look at it from a, uh, from a, uh, from a timeline perspective. Now, remember you have a gain that you're going to have a loss. Now you have a loss on the, on the firm commitment. You have a loss because it works the opposite of the contract and your loss is the loss 
is a gain, is the amount of the gain, 15,783. And you credit the firm commitment. Now keep track of the forward contract and the firm commitment. Remember, you're gonna have you're gonna have five thousand, five thousand of uh, the firm commitment. It's gonna be a credit of five thousand, and the forward contract, the liability, is a debit of five thousand. Hopefully, you are keeping track of those journal entries. Then you receive the foreign currency. You receive the foreign currency. It's one million four hundred and eighty. That's the rate of it because you have to record it at the spot rate. Remember, when you record the currency, you would record the sale at the spot rate. The cash that you would receive is one million four hundred and eighty-five. Why one million four hundred and eighty-five? Because you bought that contract to sell the foreign currency at one point four eight five. So you debit the cash, give them the foreign currency, then you the liability. Remember that liability. You said we have a debit. So forward contract. If you kept track of the balance. You had a liability left of 5,000. Now you credit the liability to close that liability because you had a debit. Okay, the transaction has ended. And at the end, you have a $5,000 gain. Remember, you had a firm commitment, a credit balance. You debit the firm commitment to remove the firm commitment. I'm sorry, it has a credit balance. Yeah, you debit the credit balance, which is an asset credit balance, unusual. So you debit the firm commitment and you transfer the 5,000 to net income. Now, different companies might use different accounts, but I'm sure you got the idea. So the overall, you're going to have a net income. You're going to add 5,000 to your net income because you hedge your position using this forward contract. So once again, any gain on the forward contract will be offset by the loss on the firm commitment. As a result of the last entry, the, the, that $5,000, what happened is we received an additional $5,000. So we did receive $1,480,000, $1, supposed to be the spot rate, plus $5,000 adjustment to income from our contract. Okay, this is exactly to the cash received, $1,485,000. So the net gain from the whole forward contract is $5,000. We had a loss in year one of $10,783 because we did not wait because the forward contract went up and we signed early. Then in year two, the contract worked in our, in our favor. We had a gain of $15,783. So the difference between those is that additional $5,000 for hedging our position. So without the hedging contract, without the forward contract, not the hedging contract without hedging the position, we would have sold the million dollar at dollar forty eight and get only one million four hundred and eighty. By hedging, we got one million eight hundred and eighty five. Basically, the same. I'm using the same example using different instrument to hedge the position. And in this session, I used a forward contract. In the next session, I would use an option. I would use a put option basically because I'm, I have the foreign currency and you want to sell the foreign currency. So in the next session, I would show you how you would process the same transaction using a put option. If you have any questions, any comments about this recording, email me. If you're studying for your CPA or ACCA, make sure you study hard. It's worth it. If you happen to visit my website, please consider donating to support the channel. Good luck and see you on the other side of success.